Okay, call this meeting to order. Two minutes left, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. America, the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation. America, indivisible, oh liberty, with liberty, and justice, and justice for all. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, Happy New Year. <laughs> Hopefully, everyone's holidays was nice and um do we have a celebration of excellence tonight we do not this evening okay i saw it on the agenda but with no thing after it so that does bring us to comments from the audience is there anyone out there who would like to make a comment i am not hearing anything so Moving on, uh, do we have any additions to the agenda this evening? Uh, we don't have any additions, but I would ask, could we move item G3 up to this spot right here so Mr. Lambert can hop off and have some dinner? That's the Washington DCS, absolutely. Thank you. Well, can we turn it over to Mr. Lambert right now? Yes, absolutely, go ahead. All right, Rick, all yours, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, my name is Rick Lambert and I am a seventh and eighth grade social studies teacher at uh, the center school uh, and I'm here before the boards tonight um, to ask for permission um, to uh, begin coordination for um, a, a new DC Washington DC field trip for seventh and eighth graders um, for the spring of 2023 um, for some anybody who might be listening in or for new board members um, I, I did make a quick little uh, background bit of background information um, if I can have a moment to read it uh, but in March of 2019 we conducted our first DC trip for seventh and eighth grade students um, it was always planned to be an optional biennial activity um, and we uh, took 82 students with us on that first trip um, it was uh, it was a fantastic trip um, and we immediately put, uh, you know, plans in motion for a trip in 2021. And then the world blew up. <laughs> and in the spring of 2020, uh, we were completely out of school. Um, and in the spring of 2021, the original programmed date for our second trip, we were still in cohort learning, not fully back in person. So, uh, so the 2021 trip was canceled. At that point, we had asked permission um, of the board just basically to take our, our two-year window and slip it a year um, and plan a 2022 trip, which was granted. And um, we continued uh, on with that idea. Um, the continuing uncertainty of where we were um, in the fall, in last fall, um, and uh, we discussed it and the, the administration made the decision that we were going to be canceling the trip in early November um, of 2020. We canceled um, the, uh, sorry, 2021. My ears get confused. We canceled the, the trip for this spring. Let's just leave it at that. Um, so once again, we are here asking permission to slip it again one more year and to officially have the board's permission to begin uh, some tentative planning. Um, some important details again for folks who may not be familiar. This doesn't obligate us to any financials at this particular point in time. Um, we're just working with uh, our tour company Destinations Unlimited uh, to reserve dates so that we can get onto calendars for 2023 um, and reserve the, the, the times we're looking for. Right now, we're looking at March 29th through the 31st. Um, but we would have an initial kickoff um, information meeting with parents for the current sixth and seventh graders um, late this spring. Um, and then we would be taking a look at um, how we're doing again COVID wise um, in the fall and making the final decision on whether we would proceed, you know, at that particular point. But there is no obligation to to the school, there's no obligation to the parents, there's no funds being uh, collected at that particular point in time. And that's why we made the call as early as we did. So that's why I'm here. Uh, do you have any questions? Thanks, Rick. Any questions for Rick, anyone? All right, here and none, we'll need a motion, uh, Chair Barnell. 
Uh, so I'm looking for a motion to approve the Washington DC trip um, 2023. Uh, I'm sorry. We don't need any more detail, right? Is there a specific, it's just 2023 Washington DC trip. Correct. So, so moved. Would like to this is Chris. Thanks, Chris. Sue, second. Thanks, Sue. Uh, thank you, Sue. Is there any further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of hopefully going to Washington, D.C. in 2023, please say aye. 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 Who's opposed or abstaining? All right, good luck. Hopefully, Great, you uh, well, it'll work out this time. All right, thank you. Thank you, Rick, very much. Appreciate it. Enjoy your dinner. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Um, so, returning to our regular order of business, um, onto routine business uh, in the approval of minutes. We're looking for a motion to approve the December 9th, 2021 Board of Education business meeting minutes. I make a motion. Sue, second. Thank you, Rhea and Sue. Are there any questions, comments, or edits on these minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone who is opposed? Any abstentions? I will abstain. This is Chris. Got it, Chris, that passes. Um, moving on to Board of Education committee reports. And the only one we have this evening is finance. Okay, um, we met, uh, went to, let's say, Thursday, uh, Tuesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday, sorry, okay. Um, and uh, we are, uh, the, uh, the budget is currently 40% expended compared to 41% this time last year. And of course, special education is a, an ever uh, changing landscape. And, um, and uh, Superintendent Hecht will review the December transfers. Great, thank you, Rhea. Thank you. I'll just give Mr. Rosselli a second to pull that up for me. <clears throat> if, um, yes, if we could go there first, thank you. So uh, the first one is uh, just a, a reclassification uh, to cover the cost for homeless student transportation. Um, because we have a student who's in need of that at this time, and that is for we think what may be the duration of the year to cover the cost for that. Uh, legally, uh, a school system, according to the McKinney-Vento Act, which is a federal law, if a child is homeless and has to reside in another location during the time for which they are homeless and having previously lived in the community, Bolton, um, the district is responsible to transport that child to school. So that's why that's there. Uh, we had to purchase uh, parts to repair the BHS utility truck alternator. Uh, we had to reallocate some PD funds from Bolton High School to Bolton Center School. Reclassification for ice melt. Uh, I think we're going to need more on Monday. Thank goodness we don't have school on Monday uh, to cover increase in the postage meter rental um, because it expired. The contract pricing expired and like everything else that went up. Um, we need to do drain repair at BCS. Um, we had to purchase some more letterhead and envelopes for general supplies. We needed a reclass to uh, cover the estimated cost to repair the heat pump at Bolton High School in the weight room, the HVAC fan motor, and previous repair estimates coming in higher than projected. Uh, we are seeing that continuously. Um, something might have been quoted a month ago, and then they come to do work, and they're like, oh, by the way, it's more, because the price of goods goes up literally by the day sometimes by the hour. Uh, we had to just do a correction there for uh, actual fee for dues and fees. 
We had to uh, cover the replacement of some failing Chromebooks, which you know about because you uh, authorized that transfer last month, but it shows up here just to show you that that has happened. Uh, we needed to get a GPS navigator unit for the clock system at Bolton High School. Again, more ice melt. Uh, then we have a reclassification from uh, district level SPED monies to specific SPED monies at BCS and BHS for evaluations and other services for students that are happening and are required for the student's IEP. We had to purchase some additional instructional supplies at BCS. Uh, we needed uh, just the online subscription um, transfer into textbooks because we needed to get another textbook for in a Spanish class. And um, we needed to repair the parking lot lights at Bolton Center School because a mouse got into the system, chewed wires, and a whole set of lights was out. So now we have fixed the lights and um, a system has been placed around it, so hopefully the mice can no longer get to the wires. Right, Mr. Jihard? <laughs> there we go. Uh, we have additional HVAC uh, repairs at Bolton High School. You know, I'll just remind everybody, I think I may have said this last month, Bolton High School is years plus old at this point, and we are seeing repairs, uh, the likes of which we have not seen, Mr. Maselli and I have not seen yet. Um, and this seems to be the year. It's sort of like when you own a house for 10 years and you got to get new appliances and everything else. So um, again, uh, we had drain work at BCS. We could scroll down one more. There we go. And then we needed to replace a bottle filling station at one of the drinking fountains at Bolton High School. So those are the transfers for December. Any questions for me on the transfers? All right, hearing none. Moving on to the budget status. Currently, we are uh, projecting full expenditure for regular instruction. Um, you can see um, the same for special education at this point in time. Uh, for administration and support services, again, currently projecting full expenditure. Operations and transportation. Uh, I want to talk about that a little further when we get down to a request to transfer because we are in need of money for John's accounts uh, to continue trying to keep up with the myriad of uh, fixes we seem to need to be doing right now, at, particularly at the high school, but really at both schools. So um, we do have a uh, savings currently. Uh, that we're actualizing in salaries of 38,000, and we have a savings currently in personnel benefits of $42,060. So in that total line, we're looking at 80,000, I believe it was $60. Um, so tonight I'm requesting a transfer of $30,000 from salaries to operations to cover projected shortfalls in rentals, repairs, maintenance, parts, and supplies. And I'm requesting an additional $8,000 salary to systems to cover contract services uh, from ESCON for software licenses, administration, and support. Now that we have so many licenses and so many um, components to all of these licenses, there aren't enough hours in the day for us to track all of those pieces. And we need a system administrator to um, one, monitor it all, to do the appropriate training uh, that needs to happen, when it needs to happen, to keep the updates current, and just to manage it all. It's just, you know, as you know, we went one to one in a month uh, in the spring of 2020. And ever since then, we've been adding additional components. So this is something that we've talked about doing. We're in a place now where we cannot manage any further without it. So uh, you'll see a full year uh, request of 16,000 in uh, my budget request for next year. And this is to take us to the end of June. So those are the requests that I'm looking for in advance. So um, I think we'll have to tackle the um, December transfers first. And then maybe if you have questions about this or however you wanna handle that, um, we'll need to do that second. 
Okay, so we're looking for a motion then to approve the December transfers as outlined previously. Maria makes a motion. I'll second it, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Ria and Chris. Uh, do we have any questions or comments about the transfers that had been described? I have a question. Um, is there any possibility of state or federal reimbursement for the transportation costs for our student who's homeless? I mean, it seems not like, a, this, not seems like an time. excessive burden to be placed on a small district. Um, you know, you can imagine a situation where a family has a a fire and you have three, four students who are suddenly displaced. I mean, it, we would, assuming the cost was again, 15,000 per, well, I guess you would have some, some savings if they're all going to the same location, but um, it, it seems excessive uh, for transportation costs for half of, less than half of a school year. Well, it really, it will be for a little more than half a school year. Some of this is in the rears and some of this is projected forward. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. All right, thank you. Yep. Is there anyone else who has any questions or comments? Kristen, I know that we went over this on Wednesday and I was asking questions about, you know, how many quotes do you typically get and all that. On another note, I'm really curious, um, is there, I mean, is there anything being done do, in, at Bolton High School with, regarding the student that is homeless outside of this? I'm just curious. Yeah, and I can't get into the specifics of that, Diana, because that would, but yes, 100%. To the support them, right. Okay, gotcha. That's fine. But thank you for the question. And I appreciate, you know, the caring for the student. Thanks. Is there anyone else? Hearing nothing, all those in, Philippe, in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone who's opposed? Representing. So that passes. So now we are looking to transfer um <laughs> the screen just appeared i believe it was thirty thousand from salaries yep. to operation um, operations and then eight thousand from, from salaries to system salaries to systems okay so motion for thirty thousand from salary to operations and eight thousand from salary to systems I guess I'll make the motion. This is Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Do you have a second? Thank you, Rhea. Is there anyone who would like to ask Thank any questions you. about uh, these transfers? Very straightforward. Um, all those in, in favor of this motion, please say aye. Hi. Is there anyone who's opposed or abstaining? Um, those passed. Um, now we are moving on to the HS student representative reports. I'd just like to say thank you, everybody. We yeah. appreciate it. And I think John will breathe a sigh of relief now that he knows he has some money in his account. <laughs> thank you. All right, who's up first? Em, are you up first tonight? Yeah, yeah, I am. The okay. seniors are continuing to apply and hear back from our colleges of choice. The National Honor Society hosted the second school blood drive of the year at Herrick Park on Tuesday, which was a big success. The girls' basketball team had, has had only three games, but our record is two wins and one loss, and we're currently not ranked in the NCCC. Our next game is tomorrow at Summers. And the boys' basketball team has had six games and they have a record of one win and five losses. And they're currently ranked eighth in the NCCC. And their next game is tomorrow at home against Summers. Thanks, Tim. Michael? Can you hear me? 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, it has been a little while, but before break, uh, the high school had a day of shortening classes. Uh, that were called Fun Actions, uh, where students went to different classrooms and participated in activities like games, crafts. Uh, I believe there was a movie room. Uh, and then there was a track meet Monday, and there was another scheduled for tomorrow, and all of the track members are doing pretty well. Uh, the midterms are starting next week, and we're hoping that all goes well and that they'll be over soon. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Feel I know they have studying to do because yeah. we have exams on Tuesday, so. Oh, well, then you better yeah, go. Guys. Thank you. All right. Uh, I will now turn things over to Kristen for the superintendent of schools report. Uh, we still have to do community meeting reports for the board of ed, Chair O'Neill. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Can't read my writing here. Um, do we have any community meetings to report on this month? Yeah, I do. Hey, Chris. Um, I attended the Bolton Scholarship Fund meeting at the beginning of January. Uh, we are... Sorry. Our treasurer is working on getting the uh, tax letters out to last year's donors, and then our annual appeal uh, will go out to all members of the Bolton community um, later in January or early February. Um, this year, we are celebrating our 50th anniversary, and we're hoping to have uh, some sort of in-person celebration uh, possibly at the end of the summer or early in the fall, um, if uh, COVID is a little more cooperative by then. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wants any community meetings to report on? Uh, not this month. Okay, now I'll turn things over to the superintendent for the superintendent of schools report. Thank you. So I'd like to start um, by sharing uh, with the board um, the just a reminder about the new CDC Department of Public Health and CSDE guidance for schools that was released on uh, over break uh, that there has been a reduction of isolation from 10 to five days for all COVID cases as long as a staff or student member is fever-free and major symptom-free for 24 hours. Uh, we have discontinued school-based individual contact tracing. And this was the guidance given. I then had a further uh, conversation with Rob Miller, Eastern Highlands Health District Director, and was advised that this is the route we needed to go. We are still uh, practicing uh, a lot of the things that we were doing before, like signing in and out of rooms for staff and assigned seats on the bus. And we know where kids are sitting in the cafeteria in the event that we do have to pivot and go back to contact tracing, we should be able to hopefully seamlessly to the extent that we can pivot back to that. Um, we uh, I daily notify the school community of the number of cases and in what grade level the cases are happening. Uh, that is something that we are required to do. Um, and now not only is a PCR or an antigen test acceptable, but also a self test is acceptable in terms of a testing requirement. And this, I just put this up there because I shared this with parents because it was shared with us by the Department of Public Health that what, what should a parent do now if they know their child has been a close contact to a positive case, either in school or outside of school. And so for children that are fully vaccinated, they may continue with in-person learning as long as they are symptom-free. They should test on day five after exposure and report the uh, results to the school nurse. If, they, if the child is unvaccinated or partially vaccinated, they should quarantine for five days and notify the school of the contact. And the school nurse and administration will review and determine eligibility for remote learning. The child may return to school on day six only if they've been favor free and major symptom free for 24 hours before returning. Uh, they too should test on day five after exposure and report the results to the school nurse. 
We received our first phase of predetermined number of self-test kits based on our total student and staff population. We received 140 staff and 360 student kits. Um, they were different kits that we received and were um, it was clearly identified that the 140 were for staff and the 360 were for students. The staff test kits contained one test and the student test kits contained two. We certainly did not receive enough for all staff, nor do we receive enough for all of our students. So um, further, we are not allowed to administer these tests in school. There is a particular, uh, it's almost like a certification that a school has to have in order to administer these tests for the federal government. We do not have that. Um, we also received N95 masks. So each staff member received eight N95 masks in a brown paper bag <laughs> labeled like Kristen, Beth, uh, Kristen and Leanne. <laughs> In quick order, I would say, I think uh, from the time we got them to the time we had them deployed was a couple of hours. So I'm pretty proud of us, I have to say. We dropped everything and got that done, along with how to care for and reuse the masks. So we go on to the next screen. So we began uh, the distribution of our test kits on January 5th under the following guidelines. If a child or staff person exhibits symptoms and needs to be screened for COVID-19, or if they've had direct exposure to an individual with COVID-19. However, having said that, as I shared, we do not have enough kits for everybody to have one. So I did ask in my communication to families and staff that because we have a limited number of test kits, uh, to please not accept a test kit from school if they had one at home or they were able to access a testing appointment, which I recognize a, a, not an easy feat. Uh, in order for us to continue to have test kits available for those who are not able to secure a test. Um, I did receive notification this afternoon that we are receiving more test kits uh, and masks tomorrow. So uh, we will be getting in line at our demo site in New Britain to pick those up. Um, and then once uh, Beth and I have had an opportunity to count through everything and see what exactly we've received. Uh, we may or may not change our protocol, but I'm thinking at this point in time, we may continue with our protocol so we continue to have enough tests for when people need them. And we certainly have had both families uh, of, of students who meet this criteria and staff members who have uh, actualized themselves of tests. And we have had others who have passed because they had um, some at home that they could use. And we're appreciative of, of the collaboration and the support. I also want to call to the board's attention that over break the state, uh, specifically the governor's office, I guess I would say, and the commissioner of education's office reiterated that remote instruction this year is a decision at this point now made only by the state and requires action from the governor's office or the state legislature. That was not the case when we began this year. It, at that point, if there was uh, significant issues with regards to COVID and some, an outbreak in schools, a superintendent would confer with the health district director and a decision would be made. Uh, I do it in collaboration with our emergency management director as well as to whether or not we would need to close either a school, a classroom, the district, whatever the case may be. As you know, we have not had to close knocking on wood. I'd like everybody else to do the same for me right now, please, because um, it's a struggle every day. Um, it's definitely a struggle. We probably hover around 20% of our staff out on any given day. And we are hovering between 15 and 20% of our students out on any given day. So uh, it is challenging to say the least. Um, so at this point, the only reason we would close the school, a school or the district would be to a staffing issue and those days would then need to be made up at the end of the school year. I just wanna remind the board that Bolton, High, Bolton Public Schools has 181 days of school. And since 180 days are required statutorily, the district may utilize one weather related or illness closure as a remote learning day. And I will determine when or if that happens. Um, and we will continue to make decisions regarding classroom team or grade quarantining on a 
case-by-case -case basis. Before I turn it over to Mr. Giard, I just would like to publicly, again, thank our amazing staff, our teachers, our administrators, our paraprofessionals, our admin assistants, our custodians, our bus drivers, our cafeteria workers. Everybody is working, I would, I think I venture to say right now, harder than we have this entire pandemic. Uh, this, this continues to be a, a very heavy lift and we are truly blessed to have amazing, talented, resilient, hardworking, dedicated staff. And I feel very fortunate to lead them. Mr. Giard. Are there any questions for me? I had a question, Kristen. Did we Go lose ahead. you? Okay. Yeah, I did for a minute. My internet got unstable, sorry. That's okay. Uh, could you clarify, um, well, I believe the first slide you showed um, about, it was about who, need, who needs to quarantine. Um, it mentioned students who were, yes, that was it. Go forward one. Yes. Uh, so uh, what does partially vaccinated mean at this point? Does it mean they've had one of two initial shots or that they have not had their booster or both? Fully vaccinated is currently still considered the two shot regimen. It is not considered part of a booster shot. Did you hear me? Not sure if we heard Did the you end hear of... me? It, you... It, it's two shot regimen is considered fully vaccinated. Okay, thank you. So I think Daryl's having some uh, technical difficulties, so I'm going to try to uh, keep going here and um, see what I can do to share his report. Um, so, and when he comes back on, he can pop in. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, wanted to thank uh, BCS staff and students and families for their donations on the December 10th CCMC Pajama Day. Uh, last year, we they raised $1,352, which was the highest amount at that time. And this year, they topped that by raising $1,680, which was awesome. So this is a great event and a great uh, cause right before the holidays. So we'd like to big thank you to everybody. Uh, Mr. G, I would like to thank our very supportive BCS PTA. They vol the volunteers organized a new event, thanks to our very own Greta Roneal, the BCS Snowman Festival, which ended up having 97 snowman submissions, which was awesome. And they were proudly displayed in front of BCS for the weeks leading up to winter break. Everyone enjoyed looking at these creative designs for sure. Uh, and you can see a few of them on the slide there. And the event raised over $1,000, which was awesome. Mr. Giard, are you back on with us? All right, I'm going to keep going. Uh, the BCS girls and boys basketball teams continue to practice and play hard. Uh, currently, the girls team stands at three and three and the boys at zero and five, but not all progress is shown in one's record. So both teams continue to show great improvement this season and we're really proud of them. And we have implemented a modified spectator protocol at both schools, allowing two uh, spectators per player for both home and away teams. Uh, the system has worked well so far. Just We're doing this just uh, by way to help keep everyone safe. Uh, Mr. GR would like to remind the board that remote learning still continues to be a big part of the day-to-day -day school experience. 
On any given day, there may be one to five students learning remotely in each class throughout the building. Learning remotely means that a student can watch the lesson live via webcam, participate and complete the work at home that coincides with the classroom. The classroom teachers continue to do an amazing job with implementing remote learning, for sure, which includes gathering material, materials daily for the remote students to be picked up from the lobby, checking in with parents and students at home, interacting with those students in live cam while all still teaching the classroom of students in front of them. Our families also are playing a very important role in this process by communicating with teachers and making sure their child logs in and gets their work completed. Mr. Jr. would like you to know, like he always says, Bolton is a special place and our administrative team is proud of all the hard work of our staff, students and families as we continue to navigate these tough times together. And I'm gonna now, does anybody have any questions for me for Mr. Jr.'s report? <laughs> All right, Mr. Mastelli, I'm going to turn it over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Um, as most of the board members know, each year we present information about Bolton High School to the grade eight students in Columbia. Uh, that presentation was actually scheduled for last night, um, but it's been postponed, so I don't have much to report at this time. I will keep you updated. But I did want to mention that we do take uh, advantage of every opportunity that Columbia allows us to interact, interact with students and families. And currently there is also a plan in place for our school counselors to visit Horace Porter uh, in the coming month. Um, we too are well on our way to uh, through our athletic season. Um, and as the superintendent mentioned, um, the visitor policy or spectator policy, um, I just wanted to mention that we have joined uh, most of the other NCCC schools uh, in that. Um, there's been ongoing uh, conversation dialogue over that and we are in alignment with those schools. Um, as I think Emily uh, mentioned before she headed out to study for her physics exam, that the uh, midterm exams do take place next week. The leadership team at Bolton High School met last week to discuss ideas on how to modify our normal midterm routine in these times of high student absences. Uh, the goal was to engage students in meaningful assessments, but also create a system where students that who might be isolated or quarantined won't be overburdened uh, with making up exams while simultaneously trying to kick off the second semester. So uh, my thank you this month goes to leadership team for their awesome work on developing a solid plan for that. That is the end of my report. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Maselli? All right, thank you. All right, now I'm gonna turn over Ms. Malinowski for a technology replacement cycle update, Sarah. Thank you very much. And give me a moment while I take control of the sharing. Good evening, everyone. Uh, can everyone see an Excel spreadsheet being posted? Thanks for, for nodding and letting me know. So I'd like to begin our, my report with the purchases that we've been able to make this year. This has been a tremendous year of being able to acquire uh, some replacement and new technologies due to the grants that really are so critical to help us continue on in these challenging times. So as you've heard in some of the other uh, parts of our meeting, you can see um, at the top, we'll begin always with BCS, go to BHS, and then anything that might be district-wide. But with BCS, we have been able to purchase the 55 Chromebooks for teacher use to replace the ones that are failing to ensure that we can uh, meet the needs of teaching and planning uh, with this, these ongoing changes. Uh, these have been purchased out of the general fund and have been distributed to all staff this week. Uh, we have also purchased through our ARP ESSER and our ARP ESSER IDEA grant, uh, 58 desktops that will replace all of the certified staff desktops at BCS, which is, um, well overdue, we are very fortunate to have the support from CREC and our IT group and we're able to replace memory in our current desktops in fiscal year 19, but it is time for us to have um, updated devices and those have been purchased and uh, will hopefully arrive soon. And then as presented earlier this year, we've also purchased uh, 
39 classrooms of sound fields or audio enhancements for the classrooms and uh, we just learned today that sh they should be arriving next month. So that's very exciting since I was, you know, we all hear about our supply chain. And these will then again support the teaching and learning, especially in a masked environment. And we were able to purchase these 100% through a grant through the um, ARP ESSER grant. For a total of $156,370. Moving on to Bolton High School at this time, uh, we also got teaching our Chromebooks. Uh, we also, I believe it was in the last month's meeting, we talked about the replacement of a, the music tech lab. We used general funds to be able to do that um, because these devices needed to be upgraded because of just how quickly all the software has more demands on our devices. So we have been able to do that. Those have, are, have been purchased, have not yet been received, but are arriving soon. Likewise, we are have located and have been guaranteed uh, timely delivery of uh, upgraded tech ed desktop computers that should that will be able to run our uh, our programs that have a heavy um, they need the, the uh, video cards so that it can run the software that we need. Uh, so, and you can see the total of $47,521 for the high school. And then across the district for the student support services, six laptops were purchased for specific um, needs. So it's an as needed, different, diff different areas such as the psychologist has, have different software requirements versus some of the special education teachers. So this is a, um, again, purchased out of the IDEA grant for a total of $14,121. Uh, this year, as you can see, our total of purchases comes to $218,012. Any questions about any current purchases before I move on to uh, projected replacements for next year? Hearing none, I will move on to uh, what we will anticipate to see in the budget when that is presented. Currently, we are projecting uh, the replacement of the fourth grade Chromebooks and the ninth grade Chromebooks. This is part of an annual replacement plan. New Chromebooks will be given to a fourth grader that will then become identified as their Chromebook that will travel with them till eighth grade. Chromebooks have a four to five year lifespan. So that will give us a nice cycle of a student having a working device and we can guarantee the delivery of services. Likewise, at the high school, a new ninth grader will receive a Chromebook. And again, that will be carried on with them. And uh, you can see the projected totals based on the quotes we were given at that, the time of developing our budget. Moving forward into the 23-24 school year, what's on our horizon will be the replacement of the uh, 25 computers in the computer lab at Bolton Center School, we call it computer lab room 20. We like other computers, we have already upgraded the, the, the memory. Uh, fortunately, many of our coding software programs that are used are available through online services. However, it is time for us um, soon to be able to upgrade these devices. Likewise, um, PE department has iPads that they, they use for various reasons. An iPad is a safer device to have when the gym is active and going and balls are flying versus a Chromebook. Uh, and currently they have, it would be time for their current iPads to be replaced we would look at that as a true replacement as an as needed if their current ice pads are working, then we will we will reevaluate. Re Moving forward, you will see the Chromebook replacement cycles. Um, last year, I did present an ongoing cycle of Chromebook replacements. Uh, we did purchase quite a few Chromebooks because of COVID. And we developed a plan that was presented last year so that we begin to stagger the replacement of those Chromebooks so that we're not 
burdened with an overwhelming cost of replacement. So the grade one would be the first class that we would replace those Chromebooks. The Chromebooks that are currently with grade one would then go into our fleet as uh, backup uh, Chromebooks, which are used are, and, and needed for that. Moving down to the high school, it is time to uh, replace the main office desktops and monitors, the administrator's laptops, and the Chromebooks for the ninth grade. At central office, there are six laptops that would be up for the repair cycle, a uh, replacement cycle, excuse me, and also um, administrator desktops. And then moving to on, and these are just estimated, this would be recommended projections. As we've learned throughout the years, technology like special ed is an ever changing landscape. New things come in, certain things happen, different software, different uh, requirements are out there. So if we were to go as far as, you know, four and five years out, uh, I've listed here, we've listed here, what would be coming up next so that we can plan accordingly for uh, our fiscal responsibility to do so. So we would be looking at laptops for administrators at Bol Bolton Center School, again, the Chromebook replacement cycle uh, through the center in high school and then other laptops used by the administration or and iPads, should that be a device that is of need at that time. And then finally going, out even further, we continue with a Chromebook replacement plan. You'll see that the tech ed classroom uh, has been moved to this year. The tech ed classroom uh, has worked very well with different computers that have been piecemealed, to be honest, and memory added to these devices. So with the upgrade of the tech, music tech lab at the high school, we are now able to support uh, the DCS tech ed lab with a more updated device that would then be replaced, recommended replacement in the 25-26 school year. And then also going in, you will see that at the high school, this is a year where a few years ago, we did do a, a whole school replacement of the desktop. So this would be the recommended year of replacement. Again, this would be revisited next year and the following year given what we know about the machines, what memory is available, and uh, the current use for those needs. Uh, also on this list would be the consideration of should the home offices need to be continued as a practice, as an ongoing practice for the administrators and admin assistants, this would be the cost if that was a, a practice that will continue at that time. And then moving down, really reaching out. We haven't looked at five years out in a few years because again, so many changes. You can see the Chromebooks, some desktops, and then again, it would be five years past um, the current Chromebooks that we have, our teachers are getting now. So with all of that, that concludes my report and overview of the recommended replacement cycle for uh, the Bolton Public Schools. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you very much. Are you ready for, I don't hear you, Kristen. So moving on to the strategic plan update, the next part of the report. Uh, I will be sharing this report with Mr. Giard and Mr. Maselli, excuse me while I move screens. I'm sorry, I won't be looking right at the camera right, right away. Uh, but as always, we begin our strategic plan. If you go back one slide, Joe, just the reminder. Oh, there we are, thank you. Of um, our portrait of a graduate is our North Star. We, we use this as our focus for our major decisions. And, uh, to keep the students always at the center of what we're thinking about doing and what we plan. So that goes directly to the next slide with the strategic goals and our four strategic goals, which are uh, student success, a caring culture, talent development, and resource stewardship. 
So under student success, I'll begin with a district overview and then Mr. Maselli and Mr. Giard will fill in with some details from their buildings. So for student success, at the district level, we are focusing our efforts on assessment, literacy and best practices. This includes ongoing professional learning and the review of our, our current status. We are documenting our work in Atlas, which is our curriculum database and continue to align and refine assessments uh, of the both and transferable skills. Finally, in order to support student success, we continue to refine the use of technology to enhance learning for all. So moving on to the high school, Mr. Maselli. Uh, thank you, Sarah. So um, we, we annually look at our connections program and we're always trying to tweak and improve that. Uh, similarly, for with our capstone, which is our graduation requirement for seniors, that's a, that's kind of an ongoing uh, trying to chase best practice. Our RTI, which is one of our support systems, was expanded to include lots of different pathways uh, to try to meet the needs of more students. Um, you know, always working on the implementation of those digital protocols. And uh, as we heard at our last, maybe not our last meeting, two meetings ago, uh, everything that we are doing with Team 25, which is our grade nine support program. Mr. G. Good evening, and hopefully you can hear me now because I got knocked off like nine times earlier. Um, so at BCS, uh, Mr. Maselli and myself this year connected to really beef up our eight nine transition. The teachers came together talking about a variety of topics to ensure success for the students um, heading into ninth grade. Um, in sixth through eighth grade, right before COVID uh, became a thing. We were just about to have our first round of student-led conferences and that was in spring 2020. Students had their binders ready, it was in March. They were gonna have March conferences, super excited. Um, but and it didn't happen, but more than anything, it was a great run for this year. So we're in the midst of preparing and students are gonna have a virtual student-led conference uh, with their parents and the staff this spring, which we're excited about. And PBIS, which is our school-wide system, uh, positive environment in the school, and second step lessons are all part of ensuring student success. And the last piece there is we've been continuing to work on our K-5 report cards and connecting them with the work of the transferable skills and the portrait of a graduate. Moving on to uh, the next goal, goal number two, to foster a responsive, caring and inclusive culture and, collab and collaborative relationships we have ongoing work across the district that includes the attention to social emotional learning. School, both schools have school-wide communication goals that are appropriate for their buildings and the different levels and different roles. Uh, relationship building activities uh, that have included the various virtual events, family events, and then also, as Mr. GR just mentioned, the PBIS school-based activities. Uh, and although we mentioned both connections and Team 25 kind of under the academic growth, uh, they also have been have been retooled to support the uh, social emotional uh, component that is more important than ever. And some quick bullets under BCS, um, we've made a, a a great effort to include more titles into our classrooms, uh, including diversity topics. Um, sixth through eighth grade was mentioned in the last slide, but also here because. It's a model to prepare students for a portfolio process, but it's also kind of like an advisory. The same group of students meets with their leader all throughout the school year. So that's been a nice addition to, to build connections in the building. And in sixth through eighth grade, uh, we're bringing on Naviance, which is like an interest inventory, sets students up to start thinking about high school and for beyond high school. And for grade eight, we're gonna uh, miss you, Mr. Davey, but we are going to attempt a grade eight virtual career day. It's not to the same level that we used to do, but we are excited to get something in the books this spring. On to our next goal, which is about uh, promoting talent development. Uh, we continue to work on our leadership development with our academic leaders. Uh, with ongoing PD and work within uh, each building. We maintain a responsive PD calendar where we are uh, monthly, if not weekly, it feels like revisiting to make sure we are meeting the needs of 
of what's happening. You know, we've been talking about the challenge and the lift from this year, and in doing so, it's really important that we address what teachers need for uh, their ongoing learning in a way that is responsive uh, to them and their and the students. Uh, each building ha is has optimized their PLC time to ensure ongoing job embedded learning. Uh, again, we're trying to be respectful and also get to that culture of our PLC time being a, a time for learning as well as a time to get some just some plain old work done, but really revisiting uh, that opportunity to learn. All new teachers have a mentor and participate in the team program and our district wide PDEC committee supports all of this ongoing work. I'll take them both since you're both. <laughs> so back going back Joe to just one uh, and at both schools we've talked about the PLC their structures have also been aligned. So that it is meeting the needs of um, the different teachers, as we heard about Team 25, uh, using TLC time to also then go between the schools with the ninth and eighth and ninth grade, but then also structuring uh, the BCS schedule so that we not only look at data but also the the learning for all. And finally, on to our last goal of resource stewardship. Uh, this is in terms of resource development. Our comprehensive budget planning process ensures that we continually review our resources and optimize our use of grants. So that concludes our report. Does anyone have any questions for us? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Maselli. Thank you, Mr. Giard. We still don't hear you, Kristen. Maybe log out and go in, go and go back in. And but in the meantime, it's time for a second read with some action required for a history text. Is that next? Yes. Yeah, I think that's the end of the superintendent of schools report. There anyway, we go. Thank you. Last thing. So um, moving on to unfinished business, and we do have a second read of a textbook, which we reviewed last month. So we're looking for a motion to approve the purchase of U.S. History, United States Interactive Reconstruction. So moved. This is Chris. <clears throat> to second. Thank you, Chris and Sue. Do we have any questions or comments about this text? Hearing none, all those in favor of the purchase, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed or abstaining? Excuse that me, can passed. you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I had to go out and come back in and I'm taking the minutes. So. Who made the motion and who seconded it? Sorry. Chris and Sue. Thank you. And it did pass unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Now we are on to policies. We have a number of policies and three different actions. So uh, why don't we start with policies that are marked for revision. I'm looking for a motion, please, to revise the following policies. 2410, retention of electronic records and information. 3300, purchasing. 5113, attendance, truancy, and chronic absenteeism. 5131.6, drugs and alcohol use. 5141.3, immunizations. 6146.1, Weighted grading and calculation of grade point averages. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. This is Chris. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions about these policies? Comments?
Hearing none, all those in favor of the revisions and the motion, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone who's opposed or would like to abstain? All right, those policies are revised. Now we have a couple of policies that are marked for deletion. I'm looking for a motion to delete the following policies. 5113.2, truancy, and 5141.6, crisis prevention and response. So moved, this is Chris. Second, Sue. Thank you, Chris and Sue. Does anyone have any questions or comments about these policies? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 This man who's opposed or abstaining. Okay, those policies are now deleted. And finally, we have two new policies. So I'm looking for a motion to add the following policies, 5126, student privacy, and 5141.6, chemical health policy for student athletes. So moved. This is Chris. Second, Sue. Thank you, Chris and Sue. Does anyone have any questions or comments about these new policies? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone who's opposed or abstaining? All right, we have gotten through policies and now we're on to new business. We have any resignations this evening? We do not. Ah, lovely. How about retirements? Yes, we do. Uh, so I would like to uh, share with the board that Terry Ducormier, Peter Mora, Carol Franco and Nancy Mazakowski will be retiring at the end of this school year. I want to in advance, thank them for their service, and I wish them much health and happiness in their retirement. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any future business? We already did the Washington DC trip. None at this time. All right. Let me pull up my picture so I know the words to say. Um, we are now looking to go into executive session. So I am looking for a motion to go into executive session for two reasons. One, the discussion concerning tentative agreement with the administrative assistance and nurses union. And two, the discussion turning the, the tentative agreement with paraprofessionals union, ratification of tentative agreement with the, oh, I'm sorry, that's the next thing. <laughs> and to invite the superintendent of schools. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Diana. I'll second. Thank you, Maria. Does so anyone have any questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Recording stopped. Opposed or abstaining? All right, thank you everyone else who has attended and who is the host of this meeting now. Mr. Mastelli, will you be able to turn it over to me after everybody, we were sure everybody else is off? Yes, ma'am. Good night all, thank you very much. Have a good night.